The investment that I put into building this workbook has just paid off. I built it last year in November, and since then I've run this workshop more than a dozen times, and I haven't had to do any preparation since then. G'day everyone. Today I have Jason Taylor from SSW Brisbane. How are you, Jason? Hey, good, thanks, Adam. Good to see you. Awesome. So we are going to be talking about documentation. Now we know developers are great at documentation. They put their documentation for themselves, usually close to the code, such as in a Git wiki or you know an Azure DevOps wiki. But what is the best tool out there if you are developing documentation for the end users to read? Right, yeah, no, that's a good question. And we're making an assumption there. We're making an assumption that developers are good at documentation and they document things. So maybe we're not focused on all developers when we say that, but let's say that there are some developers who are documenting things. And if they're using GitHub and it's a public repo, well, that wiki is pretty accessible. But if they're using Azure DevOps and the wiki there, that's great for the team, but probably not so accessible to the outside world. Um, so in that scenario, I like to use Gitbook. And you can see that here. It's basically to document everything. It says personal notes. I don't use it for that, but you could use it for knowledge bases. That's really good. Um, but what we're talking about right now is product documentation. So Gitbook is really good at product documentation. And you can kind of see an example of that here just on their site. Radio. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of sites that are using this for real. Okay, so first we have JS Fiddle. We can use that to run JavaScript snippets. If we click on the little logo here, we can find the docs link. It's quite small, but it is there. And we can see here this documentation created in Gitbook. Uh, you can see, yeah, we've got those kind of modules. Um, under modules, we've got sections. Um, and we can jump into a section, and if the section's big enough, um, we have the we have these uh, you know these these different topics within a section. Right here. So let's take a look at another site. So we've got Vue.js. Uh, Vue.js has a lot of documentation, so you can see there's five different options available here. If we just pick the first one, now are this they is, all they all different Git books, are they? They, they, they could be. This is definitely a Gitbook-like site. I'm not sure if Gitbook is driving it behind the scenes. But yeah, each one uh, seems to be yeah a different a different um, URL. So right. So, yeah. And this is just Markdown with images, essentially, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, Markdown with images. That's it. it it's it's that simple. And it has the nice navigation bar on the left hand side, and you know you can get through this. That's right, yeah, no, provide, it provides a nice experience. Typically, you know, there's a, a navigation bar on the left for your major um, nav, then there's a search box here, and then on the right, you might have some kind of subsections depending on the, on the complexity of the particular topic you're looking at. Beautiful, okay, so that's end user documentation. The second quintessential scenario for this is uh, a knowledge base for the end users, correct? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you can actually see here, Gitbook has um, support for knowledge bases. And again, it's using that same style. Um, and we have a couple of examples of that for you too. Okay. So uh, a lot of clients use Zendesk or something like that for their knowledge base. That's Zendesk, yeah. And they've got a few examples of the different clients that, that, that they use. So there's Cotton On and Phil and Ted's. And I think we've got Slack over here is using Zendesk. Okay. Um, can we do a quick search on there? such as um, not loading, <laughs> that might be a common one. Loading, let's have a look. And that should pull up a series of different articles and that is just really usually in the form of a question and an answer, right? Yeah, right. troubleshooting connection issues. Now we could do the exact same thing in Gitbooks. Right, yeah, because Gitbook supports those knowledge bases as well. Right, okay, so what I'd like to move on to is the third scenario, which isn't described on their site, which is the way that you use it a lot, which I think is fascinating, and that's how you run uh, your full day and multi-day training courses. Yeah, that's it. You know, I've run a few courses now, um, view, view uh, courses, uh, clean architecture courses, and I've helped out with an Angular course. And each time I've used Gitbook to document the actual workshop so you can see this is my Gitbook for my practical clean architecture workshop, which we run as the uh, one-day superpowers and the two-day hands-on workshop. 
I use the same workbook for both. On the one day, I basically run through the content. I provide the demonstrations and the explanations. But on the two day, we give the Git book to the um, participants and they get that hands-on approach. So I'll do it kind of uh, one uh, topic at a time and then they'll get an opportunity to work through the Git book um, and, and do it for themselves. So you can is, see- Is it. this just a, a lot of uh, text and images? Yeah, that's right. Look, you know, this Git book has various integrations. Um, and one of the integrations I have enabled is GitHub. So it's pointing to a backing um, repository. That repository is private. And yeah, you can see it's very much te text and images. Inside of assets is all the different images. And inside of these folders is just a bunch of markdown files. And so that's not a good example. Let's have a look at this one. And so you can see there's a there's a uh, preview of the markdown with some um, Gitbook specific type tags. But if we look at the raw markdown, we can kind of see, yeah, it's very much um, markdown, very easy to read and write um, using kind of normal conventions. So what's uh, the experience for the students? I think it's a really good experience for the students. As an example, if we go to one of these uh, topics, we can see here, I've got a priority level enumeration that I want the students to create. First, first thing they can do is highlight this whole uh, path and file name, and they can go to Visual Studio and press Shift F2 if they've got the Add New File extension, and that will actually create the folder if it doesn't exist, and then it will create the file, um, and so they'll be able to do that very quickly. And then they can come here, and they can just click on this copy code, and that'll copy the block in, um, and they can paste that into Visual Studio and move on to the next step. But you can also see that not only does it have those features, it's got the line numbers, which is good. Um, it also allows me to select the language that's associated with this block of code. That's, that's really nice. Right, yeah, so it provides the correct um, kind of syntax highlighting. Uh, and I can add extra tabs. So at the moment, I'm just focused on this one file, but sometimes at the end of a it's good to have like a summary of all the things that have changed and you can put extra tabs, you know, kind of to cover that so that students can check off and make sure um, that what they've implemented is right or if it's not working, they can just go in and see um, what did I miss, uh, what, what did I forget. So that's really good. I try to, when I'm creating these Git books, I try to follow conventions. So these conventions I created myself by looking at other good documentation. So you can see I try to bold um, um, file names. And if I've got some code, I can kind of come in here and just say that that's code. So I'll use code for class names and member names and that sort of thing. Um, when I've got uh, commands to run from the command line, I'll usually specify the path. And that's why I don't have to add extra commands. I don't have to say, okay, so now from the root folder, change into the caworkshop.webui directory. So I just use this little bit of information here to say, hey, this is the folder you should be in. And then I want you to run this command and this command. And so I find it really handy. Um, there's a lot that you can do with it. And I think, yeah, it does provide a really good experience for uh, students. So at the end of the the course, they've built their, an application. Have they typed anything or have they copied every single bit? It's completely up to them. Usually the course is really fast paced. You know, I have these three sections, main sections, and that takes us two days to get through. And so depending on how the students are going, if they're fast, we might have a little bit more time. That's when I have my bonus topics. And that's if we don't go off book. So, you know, this Git book is a guide. I can follow it kind of word for word if I want to, but we don't usually do that. We usually use it as a guide and we have a very dynamic conversation. And sometimes we'll go off topic and we'll look at some new things that I'm building. And so if they wanted to dive deep into authorization, we might go over to the Clean Architecture Solution template and look at some authorization stuff that's been built in or some domain events or some caching type stuff. Just depends on where the students want to go with it. Okay. Uh, off topic a little, yep. you were doing a lot of in-person classes before coronavirus and after coronavirus, uh, you know, all remote. Did your use of Gitbook change? No, no, completely consistent. Um, yeah, no, no, no change to in the use of Gitbook. I think, if anything, it makes it easy. Um, look, one thing that I have noted uh, for for um, since the coronavirus and since we've been working remotely is that I'm getting a lot more international people attending. And, and sometimes I'll get um, people who's, um, uh, who, who can't speak English very well and they'll be able to attend specifically because I have this Gitbook. They can read very well, they just can't speak and understand as well. 
right. it makes it really easy to run these workshops. That's that's really the reason that I'm here talking to you today is that I built this workbook using Gitbook and Gitbook is a great tool, but the investment that I put into building this workbook has just paid off. I built it last year in November, and since then I've run this workshop more than a dozen times, and I haven't had to do any preparation since then, because this workbook guides me and the students every time. And you know, so far the feedback has been amazing. People people like the workbook. Sometimes they forget the link, so they'll be messaging me later for the link. I'll give them the link. Um, I think it's been a big success, and and that's really different to the way that I've had to approach workshops in the past. In the past, the way that I've approached them is I've asked you for some time to work on them. Um, I've worked weekends and I've worked late nights till 2 a.m. the day before we have to present the workshop. I don't have to do that anymore. With this amount of effort that I've put in, I can walk to my desk 15 minutes before the workshop's ready to start and I can kick it off with flying colors, no problem at all. Right, awesome. Until you have to update for .NET 5. <laughs> you know, that was just a pleasure because then I'm using Gitbook. It's easy to update. I get to try things out. I get to explore .NET 5. I make my notes on it. I can come back and refer to this Gitbook when I forget what it was that I was doing. Um, so, no, that just works really well for me. I, I like working that way. Right. Awesome. Uh, if I could just step back one step, does each module, uh, each topic on the left-hand side, does that have an associated PowerPoint with it? And where does the PowerPoint get stored? No, it doesn't have an associated PowerPoint with it. So I basically have this just this set of 29 slides and you can consider that the intro and the outro to the workshop and that's all it is. So I don't have to spend time maintaining the slides throughout the day. It's just about the code demonstrations and the conversations and that's driven by the Gitbook. Right, okay. And what about the, the one day course where you do that much faster where they're not writing code themselves? Is that more PowerPoint uh, run and less Gitbook or is it similar? The only difference there is that the participants don't have time to try it out for themselves. So in the two day, I'll cover, you know, we'll, we'll get underway with getting started, a good place to start. And we'll start with creating new spy with ASP.NET Core. Once I've demonstrated that, the participants then have an opportunity to work through it themselves. And this is actually really cool in, a, in whether it's you know, uh, um, in person or um, online, because if someone runs into a problem, we can just share screen. We can put it up on the big screen or share screen through WebEx or Zoom, whatever it is that we're using, and everybody can help to troubleshoot that issue. And some people may have already encountered an issue, so we're helping them solve it at the same time. Some people might encounter that issue later, so that'll help them in the future. Oh, this has been fascinating. I have a few more questions. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get stuck with Markdown not being flexible enough? You learn to work within the constraints of Markdown and to figure out how you can um, how you can convey your ideas within those constraints. So yeah, there's a there's there's a limited amount of flexibility, but I don't get stuck. I just work out how I can best write down my ideas using Markdown. And I think you know with Gitbook, I've done a pretty great job. Is there any bits in there where you had to work around the Markdown? I haven't done workarounds. I have reached out to the team in the past um, to see if they would add a new feature for me. Oh, yes. One feature that I'd absolutely love to see in Gitbook, which is really important to me, which I'm disappointed doesn't exist, is highlighting lines of code for the code snippet that I'm showing. I want to be able to highlight you know, line seven to eight or line seven to eight and 13, or just this word of line 14. I'd like to have that control uh, within Gitbook, and, and that would be pretty much feature complete for me at that stage. I'd be 100% happy with, with what I'm able to do with Gitbook. Well, I've known you for a long time, Jason. I know that I just have to push you a little bit, and you always tell me something you're not happy about. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just find the next thing. So since this is based on uh, Git, GitHub, um, do the students ever give you changes, suggestions, and you just accept the pull request? You can do it that way. Um, typically, no. Typically, when there's an issue or there's a change suggestion, sometimes I'll do it as part of the workshop, um, especially if it's an issue. Um, but typically, they'll tell me what it is, and I'll jump into this editor here and, and make the change directly. Uh, okay. But you can you can do it by a pull request as well. 
That's kind of, you know, you don't have to have your Git book backed by GitHub. I think it's a good idea. And one of the things I really like about that is I can then branch it. So right now the workbook's on tree on, on Net5, but I've got my Netcore 3.1 branch there. So if I want to refer back to what it looked like when, when we were still running Netcore 3.1 all, those, all that time ago, it's still here for me, and I can use that. Okay, all right, let's finish off and just talk about some extra features in Gitbook. Um, what about the custom domain? Did you change that? Yeah, let's have a look at some of the settings. So uh, maybe in share, Yes, I've got I've got a custom domain configured here. Beautiful, that's nice. I've got visibility set to public, um, and I've also got it set as unlisted because really this is content for the workshop participants, and so I really want people to attend the workshop to get access to the Gitbook. Okay, well, awesome. What about uh, the branding? How much branding did you do? How flexible is it? Yeah, so for the branding that I have for this particular one, I've specified a logo, I've selected a default theme, um, but I haven't gone heavy into branding. But look, there are options in there um, that should be available. Um, you can do some pretty specific branding. I, I just haven't, I just haven't right. used that as yet. That's right. You're a developer. I forgive yep. you. Okay. Uh, now, what about uh, Google Analytics? Did you set that up? I haven't set up Google Analytics, but you'll be pleased to see that it is an option. So we can add integration for GitHub, which I've done, Slack, Google Analytics, and Intercom, which I think is kind of a, a chat system um, yeah. for, to go with your docs. It's, it's very similar to Zendesk. Okay, good. And you can see they have their own built-in analytics as well, so you can get a little bit of a general idea about how things are going and what people are looking at and that sort of thing. Now, one of the cool things about Gitbook is the search and the fact that you can get stats on the search as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, some of the, some of those analytics come up here. I guess I'll just finally call off to the pricing page because obviously in the open source community, this is free and lots of people use it. If you're not in the open source community and you want to use it in a team, what's the damage? Yeah, well, that's actually a great point. So it's free for personal use, whether you're open source or not, okay? Um, so you, you can kind of get 10 spaces and a custom domain. So there's quite a lot of value there. On team level, you get unlimited spaces and custom domains, plural, okay? Then you get your powerful search, your usage analytics, and your import external content. And then, of course, it goes up from there, just depending on your needs. Okay, well, this has been fascinating, Jason. Thank you for um, joining us for this. Uh, I think that the, uh, the, the people out there should realize that this is a great tool. It is great for end user documentation. It's great for knowledge bases, and it's also great for students when you're running courses. Awesome, thanks so much, Adam. It's been great talking to you. And this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSWTV.